Hello and welcome to the Good Imaginations podcast. Tonight, we will journey to the hammock, where you can unwind, reorient yourself, and if you would like, fall fast asleep. Before we begin our adventure, make sure you're settled. If you are seated, get comfortable. Listen to your spine and relax your shoulders. If you are lying down, get your covers and pillow where you want them. Create your nest. Very good. Now, take three deep breaths with me in preparation for the journey ahead. Let go of your day and travel to a vacation for your mind. Imagine with me. See, smell, and be present. Breathe with me now. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. Slow and even. One. Two. Three. Very good. Now, shut your eyes and let's drift off to the site of tonight's adventure. It is spring. Beautiful spring. Lush spring. Even now, as you smell the drifting fragrance of flowering trees or lilac bushes, you want to twirl your hand back in a dramatic gesture. Like the character from a children's picture book. You want to grandly welcome spring. Hello, spring! Welcome to my world. Thank you for being my world. You laugh at the silliness of yourself, and then go on being silly. You are outside and you plan to be outside until sunset. Your apartment has a private deck, where you grow wildflowers in bunches, large troughs of herbs, and have decorated with all the joy of an eccentric gardener. In the middle of the deck, hung from end to end, is your hammock. It is a wonderful hammock. Hand woven in Mexico, in the traditional Mayan style, and that makes all the difference. The thing moves with you, senses you, like another limb. It gets taut where it should be taut, and soft and inviting where you want to lean back and snooze. The thin coils of nylon are smooth like silk, delicate like lace on their own, but they're woven in such a way that you are wonderfully supported with strength. This hammock really is such a joy. You had it designed according to your own specifications, too. Two different shades of pink, and one shade of black. There was a time last summer when you were strolling past your building on the street. You looked up and saw your deck and thought, Wow, I wonder who lives there. What incredible taste they have. What a beautiful color arrangement that is, the pink and the black. And then you realized it was your own deck. Of course you liked the taste, it was your own. But still, what a fun memory. To be breathtaken by the enchanting beckoning of something and then realize it was your own. You spend your whole day on the hammock, whenever it is warm and dry. With pillows propped up behind you, you are able to work, read, strategize, enjoy your meals, and live in the hammock. It is the most comfortable seating you have ever found in your life. It even makes your plush couch feel inferior. It is the evening now, and your day of work is over. You have tucked all remnants of stress and struggle away, and you are here now to enjoy the beauty of the day. You take another deep breath of the fragrant air, and you tilt your head to the side to admire your flowers. On one wing of your deck, you grow morning glories, rich purple with vibrant pink centers. They are splendid flowers, and the pale green fairy floss of their stems climbs up the railing, up the bricks, and into the ivy. They've created a dense, bobbing, colorful privacy screen, like they're the gateway into an entire garden. You love to see them run reckless over the railing. On your left, you grow herbs. These are a delight, when you are cooking, to scamper out in your bare feet and pluck whatever it is you need for dinner. You have six different kinds, and you love to see the sun glow in their green leaves. There is something so satisfying about growing your own food, even if it is just sprigs of cilantro. 
It makes you feel unstoppable, like you've become one with nature, even if it is just a few little plants. Behind your head, as you swing comfortably in your hammock, are a dozen white flower pots tied to the fence, each one with a funny face drawn on them. The flowers that gush from the top are their hair, and some have flowing ivy, and others have true mohawks of pink blossoms. You enjoy a good face in the garden. Perhaps it's reminiscent of nymphs or wood spirits. If you had an oak tree of your own, you can bet your bottom dollar there'd be a large wooden nose and eyes on it. The little faces in your pots remind you of that. And, speaking of faces, hanging just above the herbs are the little clay faces you made for yourself last year. You wanted funny little terracotta faces in your garden, so you bought clay the color of pottery, and you sculpted. One is a giant sun with a smiling face, her rays of light decorative. The other is a yawning wood creature with a turned-up nose and a crown of oak leaves and berries. The other is strange, with round eyes and a round mouth, and a nose two inches long, like the branch of a tree. You can still see your fingerprints, the places you smoothed down the clay, on the nose of the last one. How satisfying it is to make things with your own two hands. Besides this little garden that you have made with your own two hands, there's also the ivy, growing thick and lush on the brick of your building. It ruffles beside you, and when you stare at the ivy, you can believe you live in a British manor of some kind, a place where adventures are sure to happen. As you lie there, enjoying the sway of your hammock and the warmth of the day, a black swallowtail flutters past you. You sit up. How beautiful she is. She hovers around the dill, landing delicately to lay her eggs. Last year you didn't know what those grubby worms were, until one grew up and became a chrysalis while you watched. This year you have grown enough dill for everyone. Black swallowtails seem to come from miles around just to hover in your dill. What a perfect herb. Good with fish and good at attracting butterflies. You smile at the slow, even strokes of her dark wings. You hope to see one of her babies hatch this year, slowly pump blood into his or her wings, and then fly away, like a bird leaving the nest. The butterfly who is here now is like a different kind of bloom hovering around the dill. You shut your eyes. How easy it was, and yet how profound, to create this bit of garden all your own.